but yeah somebody will have to go to court yes you know that is there, the there's no sir. doubt yeah there's That's no the only way from no, what i can no see doubt about no that. other way there's yeah. no other way yeah. right. and put and all this data on record yeah. and right. tell the court and now you said it has to be a court monitored SIT. yes uh, that will have to be that established be, yes Correct. with a judicial authority of course uh, and, and, and a continuing mandamus as yes, i said yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Namaskar. As you are all aware, the Supreme Court of India rendered a milestone judgment. It struck down the government's electoral bond scheme and asked the Election Commission of India to inform through its website to the people of this country, the political parties, all the political parties who received monies under the scheme. It also told the State Bank of India to give all the data in relation to the donors. So we have on the one hand, the names of the donors who purchased the bonds. And the other hand, we have the names of political parties who encashed the bonds. Now, the significant issue that arises, and it's going to be part of the discussion of Dilse today, how do you match the purchaser with the political party which encashed the bond. Now, several very informed citizens have been actually delving into this issue, and we have some very, very interesting data of which, which we will discuss uh, today in the course of our conversations. But for this, we have three very, very important and great friends with us. We have Madan Lokur, Justice Madan Lokur, who's been Chief Justice of the Guwahati High Court, Chief Justice of uh, Andhra Pradesh, and then of course in the Supreme Court to 2012 to 2018. Right. And then uh, uh, he is now also uh, a judge of the Fiji Supreme Court. Uh, so he is completely familiar uh, with the issues. So thank you very much for being here. We have Sitaram Yuchuri, a great friend of mine. We go back for a long time. And um, uh, we were part of the same government under the UPA. Uh, he's had a checkered career. He is uh, uh, born in Chennai, studied in uh, Hyderabad, came to Delhi, joined the JNU, be part of the SFI movement, became a member of the Central Committee in 85, Sorry. became a member of the Bureau in 1992, <laughs> was a member of the Rajya Sabha from 2005 to 2017. In 2015, he became the general Secretary of the My CBI. God, you've done a lot of homework. Right. I'm so, very so, impressed. Thank you very much for being here. We have Arun Kumar, who is an economist. He was in Princeton University. And from then he came to Delhi and, and joined JNU. He's a professor there. He taught there for, I don't know, umpteen years. And of course, now he, is, he writes and he tells us all about the state of the economy. But today we're going to talk about electoral bonds. Right. So let me start off with a question. Uh, is, was it not necessary for the State Bank of India to reveal the connection between the purchaser of the bond and the ultimate beneficiary and to find out who got the money from the purchaser? Yes, it was necessary. And, uh, you know, the first time when the uh, State Bank made an application for extension of time, I think the Supreme Court had kind of hinted that you have to give the entire information. And then when the second time when the matter came up, I mean, the Supreme Court made it <laughs> absolutely clear that all means all. So you have to give all information. So I think it would have been better if, uh, you know, in the first instance, I mean, there, there was no ambiguity in the orders of the Supreme Court. It would have been better if the State Bank had revealed all the information in the first instance itself. But unfortunately, we still don't have that connection between the purchaser of the bond and the, and the, and the encashment by the political party. Uh, the chain between yeah. the purchaser is not yet complete. Yeah, but I think it should not be difficult. You know, in, in some cases, it is known, right? Uh, but I, I don't think it's going to be difficult to figure it out. 
It's a matter of time. It is being worked out, in fact, because what has happened is what the SBI was reluctant to provide was what is called the alpha numerical numbers. Yeah. Now they were in the last uh, instance when the Supreme Court was very insistent, they provided that. So it's a question of matching the two. That's right. And that exercise is already on and much of it has been done. And then from other records, you also have data on when a particular party That's was raided, uh, or when a particular party got which contract. Correct. And now, now you, it has now come out that the tunnel that collapsed in Uttarakhand, yes. uh, yes. and, and, and that was given to uh, who donated fifty-five crores but to Sita, the election board. Sita, did the CPM receive any bond at all? No, no. So you are the only party, only party. that did they not receive an electoral bond. And and they when we, it. when I mean, we are one of the petitioners. Yes. And when we went for the that petition, was an ideological position. Petition position, ideological position, and it it came up, and the honourable Chief Justice, he said, "What is your local stand?" I, and we said, "You are a political party." I mean, no political party was allowed to be a petitioner. I said, "Our local stand is we are the only party that refused to take it as a matter of principle." I mean, not only did we oppose it in the in the parliament, yes. you were there. I we was, were I was very doing much it yes. when we opposed it in the parliament, but we said in. Matter of principle, we think this is legalization of political corruption. We cannot be party to it. That's I mean, it's laudable. Arun? I think Sita is absolutely right. You know, this is actually bribe and white. This is what we've been writing since 2018-19. That now you can bribe in legally. You know, because you think the names will not come out, so you can give to parties what you want to do. Right. But regarding the names coming out, there is one problem that is there because a lot of money came through the shell companies. Yes. You know, when the money is coming from shell companies, then somebody is giving to the shell company, which is then putting the money in there. And then what's also happening possibly is there is trading going on because you have to encash it within 15 days. So you have 14 days to trade it. So you can sell it to somebody else for a premium and that person then donates the money. Correct. So the person who's behind, you know, that may not that's be there, Therefore, yes. the chain has to so be established. So the chain has to be established. <laughs> that's, and that, that's the so point I was making. in all the cases, the chain may not be easy to establish. That's right. Well, they'll take time. So as you rightly said, you know, you have to look at other data. You know, who got caught when, who was then paying off at what point of time. All this will have to be have established. To be linked up. And, and now, there's an issue that is there that even foreign entities may have donated money. That's correct. You that's see, correct. because they could have given to shell companies and then through the shell companies, it could have gone to correct. the party. This is going to be a real a mine field, you know, when these kind of things get revealed, you know, who, which foreign parties, etc. Because you can transfer money through Hawala and through Hawala you can do, do these transactions, you know. Yes. So all that will have to come out over a period of time. It will not be immediate, but it will be very important. But let me go back. Let me go back. I, 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 sorry. Yeah, I no, I was just thinking, you know, somebody will have to do that investigation. No, being done, sir. Because you see, there are companies which have bought bonds which are multiple times of their annual profit. Yes, yes. Multiple uh, times. Yeah. Now, where did that money come from? Yeah, this has absolutely. to be gone. Yeah. In fact, if the ED or any investigation agency should be doing something... That's not going to happen. No, no, exactly. <laughs> no, no, not after opposition leaders, but this is what they must be doing, yeah. finding out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is exactly what. And remember, Kapil, when in this issue came up, the amendments to the corporate uh, law. I, op yes. I op yeah, you opposed. I moved an amendment. That's right. And what did they change? That earlier the law was any only companies that had profit for three consecutive years could donate not more than 7.5 percent of their profits to the political party. They removed both the clause. So now you open the door for plethora of shell companies Correct. to operate, or even companies, normal companies, yeah, yeah. who were buying electoral bonds themselves. Right. Were also approached through what you were just yes. explaining, Correct. and then they bought in three hundred times, a thousand times yes. more than the profits they made. That's right. No, no, this is that money that is coming through, and foreign money also, I'm sure, has so, flown. You know, this needs to be investigated. Yeah, uh, what what you're saying, and to investigate that, as you rightly said, the official agencies are not going to do it. I think the courts will have to intervene and possibly say some kind of SIT would have to be set up, which would be independent of these agencies. And that can then possibly go into the details of these kind of transactions. Otherwise, it's not going to come out. No, I, the, the point I wanted to raise was somewhat different. And this is very, very useful for the viewers. But the point is, when they introduced this scheme in 2018, in January, 
What do you think was the intent? According to me, if you amend the Companies Act and you say that any company uh, can donate as much as it wants and that you may be also a loss-making company, so obviously the intent of the political party and the government was to make money on this. Yes. That was the intent itself. Yes. Because otherwise, how do you not retain the cap? Because you know if you lift the cap, then you can have any amount of money from the big players. Exactly. And if it's a loss-making company, even then you can make it. That means you can actually set up shell companies, yes. set up and have loss-making companies and contribute. Yes. So the intent was corrupt, is yes. what I was trying Absolutely. to say. Absolutely, correct. Absolutely. That's the point I was trying and, to say. And it was a crooked intent. Sorry for using this term. It was a crooked intent yes. that you have opened up the floodgates for this sort of shell company operations. And if you recollect, in Rajya Sabha, that amendment was passed. Yes. It went back to the Lok Sabha. With and, their and majority, they re rejected it. But we passed that amendment opposing these uh, amendments. The initiation the was corrupt with a corrupt motive. The initiation itself, because they knew that this would happen. Yes. Otherwise, no finance minister would introduce a scheme Correct. like this. And that's a very, very serious issue. You introduce legislations to make money. Right. So, for the political party. Yeah. You know, the two things that need to be said here. One is the money, it's called electoral bond. Yeah. It's actually not for election. I know, no. I said that. That's so, what I asked. You know, what's happening is it goes to the party. It doesn't go to the individual candidate. No, that was his the, argument in court. Yes. <laughs> Still be limited to 95 <laughs> lakhs. Correct. In big constituents, 75 lakh here. Correct. Right. Whereas they are spending at least 20, 30, 40 times that amount. Yeah. That will still come in black. Right. So this amount is actually going to the parties for their other functions. Absolutely. And not for election. Host so training. therefore it should be. Basically yes. host training. So whatever else they are doing, they are setting up buildings, <laughs> they are doing other things, horse trading, etc. And then they are collecting black. So the idea that this will prevent the black from being used for election, mm. that has nothing uh, to do with it. Right? So it is, as you said, to make an extra amount of money, yes. which is an additionality to what they were doing. So it's continuing. You know, when the Home Minister says that now everything will be black, that's not correct. It was black, it continues to be black. This was only a small amount. And average of 2,000 crores per year, absolutely. right? Whereas what the parties are spending is maybe 10 to 15,000 crores per year. So the rest is all coming in black. But look at it. This is now, this data is all, only from April 12, 2019 to January 2024. But 85% of the bonds prior to 2019 the value of those bonds went to the BJP. BJP. And that has not been revealed. Uh, no, now, and if the Supreme Court says, I'm going to ask you, yeah. request you to comment on it. If the Supreme Court says that this is the fundamental right of the citizen to know who donated to whom uh, in the course of an election, then why should the 2018-19 data not yeah, be revealed? I, I, frankly, I don't see any reason why you know that should not be disclosed. One reason is that the electoral bond scheme itself it says that if, if no, apart from being unconstitutional, it says if the court asks for information, you have to give it. Yes, yes. Right? All the agencies, all the all the all the agencies. Yes. So if the court says that, well, we are asking for it, you please give it. Why not? So, so I didn't so, see the rationale of that information not being yeah, given. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no, but, but no you'll have to. I think well, some of you will have to take it up in court, sir. The point was that the, the election commission has said that according to your order, Supreme Court's order, we have submitted everything in a sealed envelope to the Supreme Court. This information is there with you. If you send it back to us, we will publish it. From some of the reports that we have seen, the Supreme Court ordered the registry to make copies of that and send it to the Election Commission. Correct. Then why is it not up? The problem is the Supreme that is Court... A, that is a, the issue. Yeah, but see that what they said. Supreme Court said, we passed our interim order on the 12th of April 2019, uh, which put political parties on notice that any donation made hereafter can be revealed. But if you strike down the scheme as unconstitutional, then even and you say it's a be. fundamental right to get information, then there is no question of the interim order coming in the way. Yeah. That's the point I was yeah, trying I, to I, 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 Frankly, I don't see any logic in the... You know, exactly somebody will have to go to court, no, he, as Sita is actually saying. Right. Yeah. Some of no. you will have to go to court and then say that even that data should be revealed. Because yes. that's 25% of the total amount that's contributed. Yeah. And therefore, we need to know. And there's criminality involved. Because now it's very clear that there's a quid pro quo. There's a quid pro quo earlier also. So if it has to be investigated, even that should be investigated. And th therefore, criminality is involved and should come out. Now, let me tell you the quid pro quo. Because I have some facts I think viewers should yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Sure. On the 23rd of December 2021, 
ED provisionally attached immovable properties of 19 crores of San, San Diego Martin, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, now, this happened on 23rd January. On 5th January, I mean 23rd December, on 5th January, he buys electoral bonds worth 100 crores. That is within two weeks. On 6th January, he purchased another lot of 110 crores. Okay. Then comes, this is interesting, on 2nd April 2022, ED provisionally attaches movable assets of 409 crores of this very entity. That's 2nd April. On 7th April, the Future Gaming purchases electoral bonds worth 100 crores within five days. 2nd July 2022, ED attaches movable annual properties worth 173 crores of this very entity under PMLA. This is 2nd July. On 6th July, he buys another 75 crores, right? Then on September 21, ED files prosecution complaint against him, against Future Gaming and 15 other companies. That's 21st September. On 5th October, he, bought, he gives 65 crores. Now, that shows you that obviously exactly. it's related. Now, what's more interesting is that the, now we found out when the BJP encashed the bond, okay? So the BJP has listed that it received 50 crores in electoral bonds from a company in Chennai on 5th October. Oh, okay. And there is no other receipt other than then from this one. Okay. According to investigation, one Chennai-based company purchased 50 crores uh, of bonds, one crore each on that day, and that was future trading. Right? And BJP lists receiving 50 crores from bonds purchased in Chennai on 5th January, the date I've given you, Again, the only China-based company that touches 50 crore bonds, one crore each, is Future Gaming. So now you have here the link directly established. The quid pro quo directly established. Why has the ED not prosecuted them? That's one thing. You know, the other thing which uh, Professor Arun Kumar was saying, where is this money coming from? You know, I mean, ED said that we've attached all the assets, movable, immovable, and yet they're able to give, you know, hundreds of crores? Yeah, because it's, it's a, you know, this lottery business generates, you can't even imagine, even as a judge, you can't imagine how much money they, they make. He has contributed a thousand crores. Yeah, he's contributed a thousand crores, yeah. No, but, yeah, but sh shouldn't that also be investigated? No, that's lottery you know? business. No, no, but, yeah, but, but then, lottery business also needs to be yeah. investigated. I mean, it but doesn't then, come under electoral the, bonds. I mean, yeah. we're talking but about electoral profits. His profits is shown in the balance sheet. Yeah. Yes. No, balance sheet is much less than that. Much less than that. So where did that extra black. coming up? It's all black. So and is this that, also yeah. money laundering route to convert black into white? Exactly. Yeah. That's how they bond with future trading. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bonding with future. <laughs> right, right. And this is I can replicate this In company after cases. company. I've got yes. all the data. Yeah, you got. Uh, I mean, got there's also a case with this liquor liquor bond in which uh, Mr. Kejriwal has been That's arrested. That's correct. 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 Or, or one of the approvers who turned approver. Yes, he's given 62 crores. 62. He gave 5 crores first and then 50 crores more and therefore, you know, and then and he got course, released. And he's of course uh, an approver he's, I mean, he's not going been, to be arrested. Yeah, I mean, turned approver and he's been acquitted. First he was released on bail and then he turned approver. So twice he gave the money and got it. And then you were talking about, and then Vedanta, you know, foreign companies are yeah, talking yeah. about. The, the, the contribution is by Vedanta. Right. Because Vedanta has a subsidiary in India. And so he got so many... So much detail on Vedanta. So how, where does this end? I mean, this is a country which is run by the corporate sector in collaboration with the government to have deals together. One of deal in, in deal in politics and the deal in, in make, making money. That's what it is. This is the corporate Hindutva nexus. <laughs> that is what I would call it. Corporate Absolutely. Hindutva nexus. I, I call this the triad. <laughs> the triad between the corrupt political class, the corrupt business class and the corrupt executive. Yeah. The, three, the three together get together to generate extra profits over and above what they can generate in white. And then they give a part of that, you know, to the Absolutely. political process and so others. So this triad, you know, is Ill illegal, basically, you know, so illegality is growing. That's what it shows. And now, you know, this bond actually made that partly legal because you could give it legally to them, you know, without be, being uh, afraid of being revealed. Legalized so, political so corruption. Exactly. That is what it was. That's what we said in Parliament. That we stuck to that. And I still maintain this is exactly what they did. But why are they not investigating the matter? That is the thing. That, that, is, that, really that, that is the crucial question. Million dollar question. <laughs> I, I think it's it, this merits consideration. 
with all of us because I, we are already one of the ones who made the petition against this as a political party. I think we should petition the Honorable Supreme Court to establish an SIT. Independent of the ED and the, you know, all these things, yeah. establish an SIT. I don't know how what will work. Yeah, you know, but uh, if it's going to be private citizens, it's obviously not going to be ED and all these CBI yeah. and all that. It's going to be private citizens. How are they going to get the information? I mean, if, if the banks were refusing to give it to the Supreme Court, they'll never give it to a private citizen or a committee of private citizens. But, but can the Supreme Court give them the authority to actually investigate you know, and therefore yeah, they okay. could have some judicial powers. Yeah, all you right. Know, there could be some, you know, legal that, personalities that, and yeah, so on. That, that, will require, that will require a commission of inquiry. Yeah. Under the commission yeah. of inquiry. Why not a continuing mandamus like the 2G, what they did in yeah, the 2G, yeah, yeah. where Justice Verma was heading that yeah. heading that bench. Yeah. And have an SIT, not of private citizens, not have an SIT of, of officers picked by the court. Of that's possible. That's possible. That's possible, but uh, I don't know if if the court will go to that extent. No, but is that then see, with these then. kind of yeah. facts, yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah, you'll yeah. have to. Do no, it's that. like with these kind of facts in the public domain. If the court does not do it, we right. need to go to court yeah. and say this kind of data. I, for example, this Navyug uh, yes. engineering company right. lost 19, 20, 78 crores, and contribution is forty five crores. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we have this data. Yes, exactly. Yeah. No, that's why I think this merits consideration. Absolutely. I think all of us will have to yeah, yeah, move yeah. the code yeah, correct. for an, uh, you know, an SIT, right. which was given that authority, like the 2G mandate, what you said. Yes. And I think they should be investigated because in the country's interest, right? Right, right. And then the system's interest. I mean, how are you? How is it possible for loss making companies to buy bonds? No, and that's the intent of the scheme. That's the yeah. 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 you correlate it with the intent, yeah. and you realize Correct. the scheme was born right. with a corrupt motive. Exactly. So the interesting thing is, while you say that I'll not allow corruption to take yeah. place, you enable corruption to take place. So in a weak democratic system, and you call the opposition is, corrupt. Yes, right. you, you call them, and therefore you weaken the opposition, which enables you then to do more corruption. Na kaunga, na kani dunga. No, but it enables them to do more corruption because once the opposition is weak, the institutions are weak then you can do it with impunity. Yeah. That's what I think this implied. And everywhere in the world you can see whenever you have dictatorships, they've turned corrupt, whether it's Marcos in Philippines, whether it's Abacha in Nigeria, etc. And the huge amount, you know, Husni Mubarak in Egypt, you know, huge amount, 60, 70 billion dollars they had amassed. And, so and the Arun, opposition has to be strong. Yes. Opposition has to be protected. And Arun, Arun, remember, this is not only electoral bonds. Yes. You have that PM care. Correct. No, uh, that's what, another 10,000 no, no, crores. Let me just tell you. Uh -huh. The electoral bond that is not in cash uh -huh. goes to PM care. Oh, that's that's going that, to be that, okay. that's yes. a PMK. And it's a that, private yeah, trust. Yeah. Yes. It's a private that, trust. It's a private not trust. PMK. So, not, so not, my, not my pension as an MP, a month's pension was cut. Right. By to orders donation. of the PMK. Yes, to donate to them. Huh. And maybe your salary was cut as an MP. I don't and know. Public, yeah, sector, exactly. yeah, public sector was told to contribute. Yeah, public sector public was told to contribute. And now they say it's a private trust. But Sita, there's... We, you can't uh, investigate my accounts. Yeah, yeah. Sita, there's something further. Apparently now, some people have found under RTI that some were not in cash within 15 days and then the, they called up the Ministry of Finance and then the it's Ministry only, of Finance enabled them. Only in one them. case, only in one yeah. case. So, so in, but that shows that there was a link between the Ministry of Finance and the oh, bank. Without, the a, doubt, without yeah, a doubt, without a there doubt there was a link. And therefore they were guiding what has to be done. That seems to That's imply. What happened was, huh. what happened was that the issue was yeah. that he deposited the electoral bond within the 15 days, it was not in cash. So, Arun Jaitley then passed an order saying because he had deposited in 15 in time, days, okay. therefore the 15 day deal doesn't apply. Though the scheme said you have to in cash it right. within 15 days. Yeah. Because the political party to whom it was given did not in cash it. Yeah. So then they thought that there's a loss. This related to an, the election in Bangalore. Yeah, but the point, Kapil, is that there was a touch between SBI and the Ministry yes, of Finance. Yes. That is the important thing. Whereas it's supposed to be secret. You know, therefore, you people are talking two separate silos, not uh, being able to match it. But here you have a direct link with the agency and therefore the fear that people had that only the government will get to know who's computing what. That fear seems to be getting true. Even the Home Minister said that when once the data comes out, then the opposition will have mud on its face. That means he knew what was going on. So therefore, the government is the only one and that's the problem. That you say that it is going to be anonymous, it was not anonymous. 
and therefore the opposition was at a disadvantage and this is where in a democracy if the opposition has a disadvantage then it's a huge setback to democracy democracy no yeah. level playing field no level playing field and even that this electoral even this electoral trusts you have yes 80% of that has gone to the bjp exactly you have that uh, you know yeah, yeah. the Tata trust, trust and yeah. the other uh, potential yeah, trust yeah. and all 80% to yeah. yeah. bjp pm cares then then the electoral bonds no, what is, I mean, what is happening? I mean, it is a clear-cut loot that and is taking place. Absolute democracy, loot. Weakening of democracy, you know, the level playing field is not there. And in a democracy, if the opposition is weakened, then you can, with impunity, do, do what you, you like. Now, That's the next question, do. next question is, okay, you have corruption. This is a corrupt scheme. Now, from this money, the party in power has bought assets. Yes has bought assets. assets, it has built a whole network in India, it has spent on so many other things. Right. Now, if there is a quid pro quo, those assets have to be seized. Yeah. That's the law under the PMLA yeah. and have to be recovered. So you have built mansions for your party, yes. of party offices all over the country. Every district, right? I'm told. Every district. And you have spent this money and therefore the next question that arises is to find out where you have spent this money, you need another investigation because then the ED yeah. must seize these properties. Yes. That's the other thing yeah. because it seizes properties of private individuals right. or those who they prosecute, yeah. they seize the bank account. Right. So why should the BJP's bank account not be seized to the extent of the monies that they've got? I'm raising a question of law. Exactly. I'm not saying I'm not. I no, mean, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So, because that's the law. Yeah. That's the PMLA. That's right. the PMLA. Right. So, if the PMLA. PMLA applies to others, why does it not apply to this party? BJP. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but again, you know, the whole thing will require an investigation. Now, who is going to do that investigation? Yes, I do, sir. I think yeah. I'm getting convinced in yeah. the course of this discussion. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And we'll come to you, Kapil, to complete the point I'm making is the point I'm making is that the laws are also being applied correct. unequally. Absolutely. Yeah, correct. Right? Absolutely. I mean, if there is a whiff of corruption, correct. the ED will land up and yes. arrest the man. Correct. Right. Right. And here there is open loot. Right. And we have the data with us, and I've just given you one instance. Correct. And nothing is happening. Yeah. So politically, Sita, the parties have to very actively campaign on this so that there's pressure built up, the public gets to know, then only I think maybe the courts may uh, probably, yeah. and then people like Kapil would have to uh, apply to the, uh, or uh, file a oh, petition. Or Hindi mein janta ko jana chahiye. Bilkul, bilkul sahi. Nah, nah, hum to dea, because uh, we as the CJ himself said, you have the local stand there, you can do it. Now other political parties on this issue, right. will have to now join. No, but you see, Sita, the question is, why has your India Alliance not even raised this issue together? On, on the on this year uh, on electoral bonds yes no no we did but right now India Alliance is busy with the seat sharing till the individual parties have been raising it so but now immediately after Holi and after another two days you better get your act together you better get act together absolutely take your help also no, 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 need no, no. A, time is short no, so no, it no, has no, to be immediate no. action you know yeah. immediately yes yeah. you were going to and say people like Justice Mother yeah, Loco no, have uh, to give advice proper advice you no, know as to how he is the best lawyer in the country <laughs> he'll give you proper no, but advice. your advice is also very yeah. important you know how to tackle this issue yeah. because given how badly the institutions have been damaged you know how to now move on this revive retrieve at least but yeah, somebody will have to go to court. Yes, you know, that is there, the there, only there's way, no sir. doubt. Yeah, there's That's no. That's the only way. From no, what I can no see, doubt about no other way. There's yeah. no other way. Yeah. Right. And put and all this data on record. Yeah. And right. tell the court and now you set it up. And it has to be a court monitored society. Yes. Uh, that will have to be established. Yes. yes. With a judicial authority. Of course. Uh, and, and, and a continuing mandamus, as yes. I say. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was looking at history. Right. As to whether such things have ever happened in history, and I came across. Um, Lord Cornwallis. Okay. Lord Cornwallis uh, became a Lord Lieutenant for Ireland in 1798. And after he became a Lord Lieutenant, as you know, Ireland had a parliament at that time, right? And that parliament was at complete odds with the British parliament. Okay. So England wanted, the UK wanted to dissolve that parliament. Okay. Right. So what they did was they told the majority, or they to each member they called, and they said, look, we will make you members of the House of Commons. House of Commons? Yes. Okay. And you dissolve the Irish Parliament. Okay. Right? And they gave them money. 
I'm just telling you yeah, that this yeah. has happened in history before. Right. They bought all the majority members and the minority which did not agree, they prosecuted them. Prosecuted? Yes. They put false cases on them, prosecuted them. In that process, they passed a resolution right. dissolving the Irish parliament. This is history for you. Right? Now, this is what's happened. This is what has happened now in India. Right? Actually, right. you have, in a sense, made parliament impotent. Impotent, completely. Right? You have made institutions impotent right. by the power of money. Right. If you can dissolve a whole parliament with the power of money. Right. Yeah. No, that's why, in retrospect, I think I left at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't leave the country. The country no, is in the boat. You know, you may leave parliament, the parliament, parliament, but the country is suffering because if the parliament is weakened, then how can the country I function? Agree, you know? I mean, I this is, this is, no, no, I, I I just one example in history. Yeah. There will be umpteen examples yeah, yeah. where the state uses this kind of power, right, to demolish institutions. And once you have this kind of money and the corporate sector in your favor, and pandering to your wishes, where, are you, where is democracy? No, it's already happening, Kapil. You see, the supremacy of the executive over the parliament, you just, I mean, this is what is happening. Supremacy of the executive over the judiciary. Yeah. Right. They give an order. Yes. You, by law, do, uh, change it, you know, change that Supreme Court verdict right. on the, the pass of the Delhi government, right. uh, on, on the question of composition of the committee yeah. to uh, appoint the election commissioners. By law, you change them and say this law is supreme. So the, the executive supremacy, gone are the days of your constitutional separation of powers, of the equality, executive, I mean, legislature and the judiciary, each functioning independently and being accountable to each other. I mean, that whole conception, the, the, the constitutional scheme of things, that is actually virtually, you know, being destroyed. And Completely. One other thing that's happened is, you know, we are as a nation very feudal. We bow to authority. And that's why, you know, people who are in the various institutions, they're not standing up. You know, if they could stand up and they were to prevent that from happening, how do we enable that to happen? Yeah, yeah, that but, becomes but, a big but question. This is diabolic, Karan. Also, you please understand, a democracy is the relationship between the state and the citizen. Correct. A feudal order is the relationship between a ruler and a subject. So we are in that situation exactly. today. You are brought back. I mean, <laughs> what is this, you know, all sorts of rituals that are going on with the Prime Minister leading as the leading pujari of, of every uh, ritual. Yeah. Uh, How do you have Ram Raja without accountability? Yeah. You know, Ram Raja has to have accountability. Well, you know, but there is accountability. We are moving away from electoral bonds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, uh, Justice Lokur, let me just ask, request you to comment on what do you think the Supreme Court I mean, in the context of what it has done before, do you have any hope that the Supreme Court will really... Uh... They should. They should. You see, I mean, you've had uh, a very important case of this uh, Jain Hawala, for example. Yeah. Right? Where a I lot happen of, to be the lawyer. Yeah. But you had a lot of, uh, you know, VIP politicians yeah. who were accused. Yeah. You had 2G. Yeah. You've had uh, the uh, coal scam, yeah. all right, where it was sent to a special judge. So there are instances of this nature, you know, where the Supreme Court has intervened. Uh, Chandraswamy's case is another one. So you've had uh, SITs investigating into these things. So it is possible. I mean, it's not, it's not something that is unprecedented, which is being discussed. No, no I'm not talking about unprecedented. Yeah. If you talk the Jan Havala case, pardon yeah. my saying so, yeah. there everybody was... No, that's all right. That, Why? That's, because yeah. on a legal proposition, I happen to be the lawyer. Yeah, yeah. Legal proposition that entries in diaries are not admissible. Yeah. No, that's that's a different right. point. So uh, therefore, like everybody was free. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So Fifty-two yeah. names are there, yeah. and I think two people admitted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yet we, we know that. Yeah, we are not yeah, naming two it, people uh, admitted. My good denied. point was denied becoming the, a minister because he admitted. Right. The point is not whether they yeah, yeah, admitted or not. I, but the point is to how do how does the court monitor the investigation. What the result of that investigation will be, nobody knows. But the court will have to monitor that investigation. There's a difference, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Madan. There's a difference. The difference is in during UPI time, both the press and the courts right, right. Right, were functioning somewhat differently. My worry is only that, which is why I raised this issue. 
point is the court must not must now realize given that the press is not willing to do anything not willing to investigate it is only citizens who are investigating and if the court doesn't rise to the occasion then what is in jeopardy is democracy itself because if this continues we're not going to have the kind of you know institutions we've had in the past no no no, no way that's my worry they have changed over a period of time and they're continuing to change so you're right that you know we cannot compare with 90s to today's uh, judiciary or even and, during uh, the yeah. emergency yeah. the courts were still right. up in arms yes. right in today's situation uh, do you expect the courts to be able to they take should they should but will they or not uh, is is really difficult to say but really whether whether the courts have the support of the press or not i don't think it should matter at all yes you know theoretically the yes, courts are public, independent public pressure may have yeah public pressure but then that public pressure will have to come from uh, the political know, the political yes. parties because it's not coming from the media that's for sure that's yeah right. it's not coming from the that's media right. no already the degeneration has set in way fairly deep correct now that it's it's high time that we step in to stop it from totally disintegrating right. I entirely agree with you. Democracy is in danger. The entire system is in danger. Before it totally disintegrates, we need to intervene. Yeah, yeah. You see, what has happened to parliamentary democracy in right. this country is that the executive is answerable to no. Oh nobody. yeah, nobody. Yeah. Yes. This is the state That's of affairs exactly. today. Yeah. Are we the people? What is the meaning of yes. it? Yes. Sovereignty is with the people. How do they exercise it? Through the elected representatives, who are accountable to them. and the executive accountable to the elected representatives that is the linkage right. you destroy the parliament linkage gone right. so we the people gone i mean just absolutely that's the just reality yeah. 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 That's the it just collapses and gandhi in hind swaraj actually said this yeah you know in hind swaraj he says the pm is not accountable to the party party is not accountable to the yes. people they do things for themselves so this accountability has to be brought back and that means we have to educate the public about these issues especially about the corruption which is why we are having damages, this program absolutely <laughs> this is the and real how reason how it damages them yeah. because with this corruption what happens policies fail you know you don't not able to implement inequality increases that impacts the economy further so the loss to the public is enormous as a result yeah, of this. i mean you saw the report yesterday yeah. thomas piketty and council and etc brother i mean there is greater inequality than in the british raj yeah, that's right that is correct absolutely high inequality in the last 10 years than in the british life and and that doesn't include the black if uh-huh. you include the black it's even worse, worse. you know so. and then we have the ugly display of wealth being lauded in this yes. Yes. right that's the other very sad thing that's happening so money right. is an overpowering factor in everything in life that's right, right? Uh, values are all over but i think uh, what what you've told the public today is something that will educate them open their eyes to the dangers ahead right if this continues in this fashion so thank you very, very much but i much hope it motivates here. them to act i hope so too uh, that is my we the, all have to put in our effort yes, i hope yes. it motivates you to act also <laughs> sir no, of he's course, motivated yeah, I've, 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 i've already been a petitioner <laughs> i'll continue Card- to cadres have to come up and yeah. cadres have to yes. go to the people and thank you very much thanks for being here it was a pleasure great to have interacted with you